Here's the latest of my online purchases from eBay. So get ready to unbox. This is a canna lily and it's called Cleopatra. It's got red and yellow flowers and they're very sort of random patterns. Sometimes they're spotted, sometimes they're like half the flowers red, half white. We've got a red back here. Now that's the um, lazy Susan, I think they call it. This is the red back here. Herbston, that's the tall one. Now I only ordered two of those, but it looks like they've given me three because that looks identical. And I think because they weren't particularly um, generous with the leaves and the growth, maybe they that's why they get gave me three. This is the Rudbeckia speciosa, that's the one with the black centre. And over here we've got the, the can of Cleopatra. So quite a healthy looking one there. And you can see some new growth coming through here. And that's some fairly new growth there. And lots of good healthy roots there. So that one is going to be planted at the back. And with the others all planted at the front. So that's all your, the packaging there. So it's all quite... Um, Good, good nick, I think. So ready to go and plant. Online, I ordered some blue chalk sticks. They are the smaller ones, and as you can see, um, in transit they lose a bit of that blueness. Uh, you know, all the handling and all that it rubs off some of that that bluey covering. And in addition, they gave me one of these, which is the longer one. And um, they'll. There's 59 of the shorter ones in there, and um, I paid for um, 50, so that's pretty good value that I'm getting quite a few extra. Although, considering that they're basically bare rooted, which I knew, um, and they grow hundreds and hundreds of them on this place, it still wasn't ultra cheap. I think it was still around the $45 mark for all that. This is the front garden. You can see the yellow Rude back here, Herbston on the left hand side near the box there. So I'm planting a few more in the front garden. Now that's one of the, the large blue chalk sticks that I've got. And it's looking a bit worse for wear. And then I've, around the garden I've scattered quite a few of the small blue chalk sticks. As you can see, various locations. It's very noisy here, we're on a main road. So I do apologise for all that background noise, so lots of little ones in there on the driveway. Hopefully they'll be able to handle the very, very tough conditions there because a huge amount of concrete there radiates an enormous amount of heat over summer and that pretty much gets full sun all day, apart from that tiny little bit in the corner where you've got the roof and it's providing a bit of shade. The Rudbeckia herb stone's quite root bound, so I'm going to tease that little bit. Help stimulate some further root growth. I'll show you the development on the plants that I got a while back. So I've got blue chalk sticks planted from the plants that we planted from our little purchase on the internet. Now they're quite small, but they're coming along okay. And over on the driveway, got our Ioniums, and again, down below, I've planted that blue chalk sticks, so you can see that dotted around. 
So they were cuttings without any um, roots on it at all, but they don't take too long and they take off. So I'm pretty pleased with how they're going. It's uh, only just into spring now and the weather's been actually quite cold for the first few weeks. So you can see that they're coming along okay. The other plants uh, I planted, now this is, uh, I didn't uh, cut this back, it's flowered, but even the flower heads don't look too bad. So that's um, the Rudbeckia herbston, or herbstone. What I did was I thought it created a little bit of height in the garden, front garden, so I've, I've planted a couple more. So I've got one here, and you can see that this one has some flower heads just coming on. And the other one I've planted over in another section of the garden. See if we can locate that one. So that one is right in there. So that one's not coming along as well. You can see that this geranium is going mad at the moment. Now that was a $5 you know, special on Bunnings you know, discounted area. And that's one plant. It was only a tiny little plant when I bought it, but it, it just seems to flower its head off. So I just dead head every now and then, and then within, it seems like only a few weeks later, it's flowering again. So it's a great, great little plant. So um, this uh, garden looks a lot better in the warmer months. Um, we've got penstemons that flower, and we've got other flowering plants like Achilles, but they're all they're only just starting off now. So you can see over here we've got a few little flowers coming on and over there and you've got a yellow one as well they probably need a bit of a trim back and uh, there i've got an aloe that's finished flowering it was had bright orange flowers it looked quite good and it's got nice sculptural quality to the actual plant itself so even when it's not flowering it still looks good so that's a winter flowering one which adds a bit of color to the garden in winter and I've got another one over on the other side now this front garden's quite tiny um, so that's the other one that's a, that was a yellow one called Southern Cross it's from the aloe aloe range which has been bred in Australia um, and apparently once they get going they flower really well so that's the first year of flowers now here we've got some more of those blue chalk sticks so they look quite tiny now and amongst the rest of the garden. So as you can see, the fence line stops just here. So if you draw a line across, um, so this is my finger there, across to where that letterbox is, that's basically my front garden. So that little section in there is our what belongs to us as such. And then what you see from where I'm standing down through the rest there so even that aloe there that's not in our garden that's actually technically in council land but we've just put irrigation in we keep it tidy so you know it doesn't cause any problems but the front garden itself what we own is really quite a tiny little patch I'll come back to this front garden when it's really looking a lot better. This is in its, it's really in winter mode. I know it's, it's spring now, but it's really still in winter mode. And there are some things that aren't even like coming up yet. Like for example, I've got a few cannas. There's one there. Um, and a few planted elsewhere, which haven't even, you know, showing any leaves at the moment. Um, that'll add a bit of extra color. That, that's a pale pink. The other cannas over there are flowering. I don't know why they're doing it that this time of the year, but they're happy with that. So that's a marine eagle, which is, I've got some of those out the back too. It's a lovely canna. It has beautiful um, red flowers, but they, they it's an orangey red. And as you can see, like that's also an orangey red. That's more orange, I guess. But you can see that that is a similar to color. Right, so I think that's enough for for now. And uh, down the track, yeah, later on in spring, I'll plant a few more flowering plants in there as well. We'll have a look, another look at the garden, and see how it's coming along.
So it's now a couple of months on since planted the plants. Let's go back and have a look how it's all going. You can see that the garden is a bit more um, spring mode or early summer mode now. Canna lilies there certainly come on and got a lot more colour in the garden. The garden is still um, hasn't really hit its best yet. So that's the original Rudbeckia herbston and that's finished flowering recently. But you can see a lot of new flower heads about to come on and in the garden bed there is one of the online plants you planted, the Rudbeckia herbston. So just here and again you can see a few flower heads but uh, still a way off a few weeks, uh, a week or so from uh, flowering. And it's a very busy main road here, so it is very, very noisy. That's Verbena bonariensis, by the way. Very airy. Now, I can't even remember where I planted the red back here. Um, that was the Lazy Susan or the Black Eyed Susan, I think they call it. The red back here speciosa. I thought it was in here somewhere, but I re really don't recall where it was. So I may have lost that one. You can see that the blue chalk sticks have um, sort of established themselves. Haven't done a great lot. Now, these are unusual, a bit like Aeoniums, that um, they have their best, uh, or their growing season is basically in winter. So they're not going to do a lot until winter time, then they go psycho in winter. So next winter I'm expecting a huge growth, but it seems like most of them have taken. Only small, you can see a couple there. There's another one there. The uh, big, big one that we planted somewhere in that area, um, I think that just got buried by mulch and so on, so I've lost that one. It was somewhere in this area here. I don't know if there's anything still there. Doesn't look like it. And over in the driveway, planted a few. There's some canna lilies here. So there's a canna lily there. And a couple there. And they've got the pink flowers. I'm hoping that they come out. That will contrast nicely with some chalk sticks. So when more chalk sticks grow, I'll transplant them over into this area. These, by the way, are Cosmos, lovely bright sulphur, mustard, yellow, great colours. There you can see some more chalk sticks in there. And I think I tried on some the other day. Um, yeah, there's one there that looks like pretty trodden on. Some over the driveway. They're not looking too bad. They've certainly grown a bit since they were planted out, but not massive growth. Yeah, I'm looking for that ripple effect of like a sea of like that ripple blue-green look. They're a long way off from joining up to make a like a continuous ground cover but I'd, I'd say they're only one growing season away from that, really. So not many have died, which is good. I can't even recall where there's... I've dotted some others through the garden, but can't even recall where they are. So the um, Rudbeckia herbston that I planted out a while back that's this one here in front and that's actually flowering already it's just adding a tiny bit of height to the garden it's a very low type of garden apart from those plants maybe the uh, verbena bonariensis and of course the cannas over by the fence there
and they, they've, they're the tallest, almost the tallest plants in the garden. Now I've still got some other plans for the front garden. Um, I want a bit more colour, so perhaps some more penstemons. The soil's absolutely rubbish out here, so I really don't want to go and spend too much money or too much time on it. Um, just want something that looks a bit cottagey and with a bit of colour. So let's go out to the back garden now and see how other things are going. So out the back, the Canna Cleopatra is planted roughly, and I'm still not even 100% sure. I did mark it, but somehow it got removed. I believe it's this plant here, this one right here. And I can't see, apart from a tiny, tiny marking there, I can't see any evidence of the marking on the leaves where you get some of that um, sort of purple brown leaf. I'm going to have to wait till the flowers come up because they're meant to have really random patterns of yellow, like can be the, leaf, the flower can be half yellow, half red, it could be yellow with spotted red. So the predominant colour is yellow, but there's uh, degrees of red within that. And even the leaves can be half green and half that sort of brown purple colour. And a quick little look at the back garden. It's only just starting to come on. It's early December, really late season for us here because our spring was, we had some cold days that were as cold as winter. We had hail not long ago. Um, we've had a lot of wind and not a lot of warmth, uh, a few warm days here and there, but scattered with some days that really weren't that very warm at all for our, our spring weather. So below 20 degrees, not enough for these canners to really want to get up and get going. So um, overall, fairly poor showing so far from the canners, but I'm sure we'll get a much better showing once the warm weather really hits. So. I'll be coming back to give you updates and I'll be doing a bit of work in the front garden as well so I'll be giving you updates there as far as what's happening there in the front garden and of course there's one of our plants that featured in an earlier video that's the video of uh, which is called Leanne's Garden Projects number one it was transplanting the elephant ears and that was in a pot on the balcony and it was a bit of a palava getting it down here. We finally got it down here, some funny moments. And the garden was certainly looking a lot better back then because we planted it in a lot warmer weather, transplanted it in warm weather. But there you can see it's still going okay in the back garden. Not as much water as it was getting in the self watering pot but still doing well and it's producing a few pups for us. So pleased with that. Another pup further around, I think. It's a bit hard to see, but you can see extra stalks there. So happy with that. And looking forward to bringing you some more updates from our garden. So that's bye for now.